A gracious good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer. I'm Jim Gary, one of the Honorary Associates at the Church of the Ascension in Anglican Parish in London, Ontario. This evening's Evening Prayer for this Wednesday will be coming to us from a worship resource of the Church of England. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us a light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing, sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 82. And as we're saying this psalm, I would invite you to listen to the remarkable call for justice and righteousness, care of the weak and the poor, the humble and the needy that comes through loud and clear in Psalm 82. God takes his judgment in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand, they that go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. In our psalm prayer, strength of the weak, defender of the needy, rescuer of the poor, deliver us from the power of wickedness, that we may rejoice in your justice now and forever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture today is read from the Gospel according to St. John, and we are still in the first chapter. You may remember in, in yesterday's reading, we were introduced to John the Baptist, and today we hear the testimony of John the Baptist. Excuse me, we heard that yesterday, and today we see John calling Jesus a Lamb of God, and we also hear the calling of the first disciples. This is from John chapter 1, verses 29 to 42. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is a Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for the reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is a Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, 
and they remained with him that day until it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John the Baptist, always a fascinating character. As I said yesterday, we're used to meeting him uh, in the season of Advent, and today we get to read about him here in early August. I'm, I'm fascinated by his saying that he did not know Jesus because John and Jesus are cousins, but it is possible that they never had a chance to meet. I have some cousins who I literally have not seen since I was in high school or younger. And I think if one of those were to walk into my home today, I might not know them. I have other cousins that I have not met in person, but we have reconnected because of Facebook, and I think I would recognize them. And a cousin I have not seen who phones me every now and then, who keeps me posted on how things are going. Perhaps you also have cousins that you don't know or would not recognize, and perhaps this is the first time that that they met, other than when Mary went to visit her kinswoman Elizabeth in the Judean hill country. Uh, so it's possible they would not have known each other. So anyhow, John was told he would recognize Jesus when a dove like the Spirit descended upon him and remained there. And we're told that that happened at his baptism. And other accounts say that a voice thundered from heaven, this is my beloved, with whom I am well pleased although some said they thought it was thunder. So that's John and that's Jesus. And John looked at Jesus twice in our reading and said, look, behold, the Lamb of God. And of course we recognize that from our liturgy, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's exactly what it means. Lambs were sacrificial animals. And yet Jesus paid the human sacrifice price and in doing so, he paid the punishment we rightly deserve for our sins. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's John and Jesus. And then as our story comes along, John sees Jesus again, saying, look, the Lamb of God. And two of John's disciples were with him and one of those disciples, Andrew, uh, decided to follow Jesus. Simon Peter's brother, we're told, or Simon's brother. And he found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, the anointed one. And he brought Simon to Jesus. Now, the, the real heart of that passage, Jesus looks at Simon. And uh, some would say that Simon translates uh, to mean uh, shifting sand or sinking sand. And it would certainly fit here. And he said, well, your name is Simon, but I'm going to call you Cephas. Now, Cephas is Aramaic, and it means rock in Aramaic. And the gospel writer John helps us out by saying that's translated as Peter. Peter is also a word for rock. Uh, if you know a little bit of French, you know the French word for Peter is Pierre, and Pierre is, uh, is also the word for rock. Uh, we lived in northern Ontario. The, the road signs were bilingual, and there was one sign saying, as you came up over the hill and toward Espanola, uh, watch for falling rocks. And then the next sign in French said, risk to shoot the Pierre. And uh, I thought it was kind of a nice bilingual joke. Pierre Trudeau was our prime minister at the time. Shoot means fall, and there was a risk of the fall of go the government of Pierre Trudeau, was, I thought, an interesting bilingual way of, of reading it. I'm always looking for second meetings, and I just love bilingual jokes. And if you're scratching your head and saying, what is he talking about? 
that's okay. Uh, that's enough for that. But uh, Peter, or Simon, I should say, that might have meant shifting sand. Uh, I, there's not, uh, I found it in several commentaries, but I couldn't figure it from my uh, Greek studies. But anyhow, Peter or Cephas, the Haramaic, uh, in both cases, it means rock. So the one who was known as Simon has become the rock, the rocky one. And Jesus later said, Peter, you are the rock, and on this rock, I will build my church. And he often continued, continued to be known as Simon Peter. So it, uh, it all works and it all makes sense. But from this, our take home for the day is uh, Andrew went to get his brother Simon and said, we have found the anointed one, the Messiah. Who would you go to? Do you have a brother, a sister in faith or an actual family that you would go to and say, we have found the Messiah? Would you share that excitement? Would you, like John the Baptist, look at Jesus and say, look, behold, the Lamb of God. How willing are you to share your faith? How excited are you to bring others to the Christian faith? Andrew and Simon Peter both became disciples of Jesus and apostles of the early church. They followed, they learned about Jesus, and after Jesus had been crucified, they carried that word of Jesus to the rest of the world. Right here within our community, and if you're watching from another community, I feel confident in saying right in your community, there are many who do not know the story of Jesus. We sing that old, old hymn, I love to tell the story, for some have not heard of Jesus and his love. Do you love to tell that story? Could you tell that story? Would you tell that story? Amen. We continue now with our prayers. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we pray to you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in a path of peace and goodwill. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We pray to you, O Lord, that there may be peace in your church and for the whole world. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together in your church and for the whole by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. And I invite you now to enter into a moment of silent prayer for those that you would wish to, protect, to commend to God's mercy and protection. And now the collect for this day. Almighty God, your son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace. In all, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we join in that prayer our Savior taught us. And if you've learned a prayer in another language or in a modern translation and wish to use that prayer form, that's certainly okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Just a couple of announcements now. We had uh, four of us gather for our Zoom Bible study this morning. We will be doing it on the Wednesdays for the remainder of August. If you are interested in being a part of it, please uh, send me a message uh, and I will uh, we'll see to it that you get the login information. As I understand it, those who have already taken part in it uh, will use the same login for the, uh, the next weeks. I'll just confirm that before Tuesday comes around and I'll be mentioning it again next week. Uh, our, uh, our Bible study we found was, was very helpful, and we're doing those studies on the readings for the coming Sunday. I also wanted to mention that tomorrow we will be observing the festival, the Feast of the Transfiguration. Uh, that is assigned to be observed on the, the 6th of August. I thank you so much for joining with us in evening prayer, and I pray that all of God's blessings be with you. Good night.